Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome, welcome back. Listen, it has been a long time since we have gathered together on Transformation TV for our Purpose Empowerment Sessions. Listen, if it's your first time listening, my name is Clifton Petty John. I am the leader of the Transformation Center. I forgot the name for a minute. I'm the leader of the Transformation Center. We are simply a faith-based community for all people. We gather together twice a month right now virtually. We begin uh, gathering in Trenton, New Jersey and Dover, Delaware. Then we started going virtually. And with everything we have going on right now, this seems like the safest and easiest way for us to gather together is through the World Wide Web. So I want to thank you all for joining. I want to thank you, those who will hear the replay. Please pass the message along that we will be here the first and third Wednesday of every month at 8 p.m. That's right, the first and third Wednesday of every month at 8 p.m. The only thing that we have changed is the time. We used to do 7.30 and now we're going to do 8 p.m. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify your name. You are amazing. You are wonderful. There are no words that can rightfully begin to describe you. We thank you for our lying down on last night and our rising up on this morning. We thank you for the new mercies that we received on today. We thank you for this opportunity to come together. Now, we're asking, God, that tonight, I'm asking tonight, that you'd anoint me afresh from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, and from the soles of my feet to the crown of my head. Let me speak your divine oracles. Let me speak only what you would have me to speak it, the way that you desire for me to speak it, that those who hear it may grab hold of it, apply it to their lives, and begin to see the transformative power of you. And we will be careful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And your name that is above every name, we pray. And we say, I mean, listen, as I said, I'm excited. I'm going to try to slow down tonight because, because if you've ever listened to me, you know that when I get excited, I tend to talk a little fast, okay? I tend to talk a little fast, but I want to make sure I don't do that on tonight, all right? And from this moment forth, I want to make sure that I do not do that. I want to give a little bit of background as far as uh, the Transformation Center. God gave me this vision many years ago. However, the name did not come into conception until a few years back after I wrote my book, From Stagnation to Transformation. If you've been with us since the beginning, you know that that was our very first teaching series. The From Stagnation to Transformation <laughs> series was the first thing that we did, and we navigated through this book. Some of those teachings are still on our YouTube page, and I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm telling you some great teachings that will help bring you up to speed with where we are now, as well as we will be uploading a lot of these teachings there too. But I also want to give each and every one of you the opportunity to join my personal Facebook group. I am a life coach, all right, by profession. I'm a life coach and I'm starting a private group. The reason why I wanna invite you guys to that group is because I want these purpose empowerment sessions to be interactive. If you've ever been to a live one, you understand how interactive they are. However, I do understand that as we are all going through our transformative process, our personal transformative process, that some things that we want to talk about is more intimate and more personal. And we may not want to do that in a pub on a public platform. So I've created a group a secured group. I am very selective of who's able to join the group. I stick to those rules as it relates to the group, and I expect everyone that, that comes into that group to do the same. So at any time throughout any teaching, there is something that you would like to discuss, but you don't want to discuss it on the pl public platform. You are welcome to discuss it in that group. I'm going to put the link of that group uh, in the um comment section when we finish so that you're able to have access to that. Also, if you feel you want it more personalized and you want to set up a complimentary coaching call. Now, listen, joining the group and taking advantage of this coaching call does not mean that you are signing up for the coaching services. It just simply means you're taking advantage of that complimentary session 
It helps me with scheduling as well because it helps me stay on track. And we can sit down and we can discuss where you are now and what we need to do to help you experience transformation in whatever area of your life. I believe that transformation is, is essential in all core areas of our lives. And we're going to talk about those core areas throughout our teachings, okay, or throughout our conversations. I don't like to call them teachings because I believe they're conversations. I believe that we can gain so much from conversations. And the reason I, I, I uh, have adapted or adopted that mindset is that one of the things that I've understood understood in my life, uh, and I really gained a greater understanding of it uh, when I began to listen to uh, Elliot Carlisle, you've heard me talk about him and his show called Destiny Conversations. And it began to spark something inside of me and ignite something inside of me and remind me of just how powerful God uses me in conversations. Now, those of you who know me, I identify as a conversationalist. Why? Because I know that I can sit down and talk to you about anything that can be sports, day-to-day -day life. We could be laughing, joking, and playing. And from that conversation, you're going to leave encouraged. You're going to leave empowered. You're going to leave edified. You're going to leave with clarity and direction. You're going to leave healed. You're going to experience deliverance. Why? Because that's the grace that is upon my life. So I've taken that grace and now we have put it in this platform once again, all right? You might say, you're doing a lot of talking. Let's just get to it. Here's the reality, guys. I do not know where we're going to go tonight, but I know that we're going to go to a place or to a dimension that has been designed specifically, not just for me, but for you as well. Not just for me, but for you as well. I know that there is an assignment on my life tonight that is connected to your purpose, that's connected to your vision, that's connected to your destiny, that's connected to your life. I understand that uh, on tonight. I understand the mandate. I understand the weight and the heaviness of it. And I'm going to take my time on tonight. Therefore, if you have to leave, I totally understand. I understand the teaching will remain up so you can come back at any time. Also, if you listen the into, throughout the entirety, please do not hesitate to come back and listen again, because sometimes when God is speaking prophetically and, and, and giving some apostolic instructions, we need to hear that thing more than one time. And I'm talking about myself as well. I go back and listen. That's hard for me because, listen, I sometimes don't even like to hear myself talk. I don't like that. Well, I feel like I'm lopsided or something. I'm sorry if I am. I'm using a new platform. So, guys, I'm trying to get uh, used to the platform as well. So, bear with me. Hold on. Let me give me some of my tea. So, I honestly do not know exactly where we are going tonight. But I do know that I want to talk to you about your perception. Your perception and your view on life and your view on yourself, and your view on your ministry, and your view on your business, and your view on your voice, <clears throat> and your view on what it is that you add to this world. Now, 2020 for many, uh, or, or many have labeled it as the worst year that we've ever faced. Now, I do understand that. There's been a lot that has happened this year. There's been a lot that has happened this year. However, I cannot say that this has been the worst year of my life as it relates to purpose and design or as it relates to the vision that the creator has placed in my life. This is one of the most clearest years of my life. I have got so much clarity this year. There are some things the creator required me to do this year that brought about that clarity. And I believe that it was because, as I tell everybody, I know a lot of people struggled with the quarantine. We saw people break up. We saw, you know, the, the, the effects of it, you know, having to be around someone that you thought you were building life with only to understand you guys really weren't building life. You were avoiding each other. And now you have to face each other on a day-to-day -day basis. And you realize I can't do this anymore. Some of you are at a space, even in your own personal life, where you feel that way about you. 
<laughs> you had to come face to face with yourself and you're ready to part ways with yourself. You're ready to give up on yourself. You're ready to give up on your dreams and your hopes, your aspirations and your vision. Why? Because you just feel as I just can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. Well, perhaps the this that you are attempting to do is never what you were intended to do anyway. Perhaps that's the case. Perhaps it's not that you can't do that. It's that you can't do this, but you should be doing that. Maybe it's some things that you just need to let go so that you can grow and evolve and begin to do that, which you were called, created, and designed to do. So here's what the creator did. He took me back um, to the foundational scripture that he gave me when he called me personally to ministry. Now, there are call, there are stages of the call when it comes to ministry, and we're not going to get into that. We can get into that on another time. But here's my thing. I know that some of you are out there, and some of your struggle with ministry and with business and with life is that you've listened to everybody else tell you what you ought to do. You didn't hear the creator for yourself, or perhaps you heard the creator for yourself, but you're struggling with the concept that you heard the creator for yourself because what the creator is telling you contradicts what everybody else is saying that you should do. Well, if you're at that stage in life, baby, I got to be honest with you. I got, got to be honest with you. I need you to put your big man pants on, your big girl pants on, your big woman pants on whatever type of pants you have. I need you to put your pants on, your, your, your grown-up pants on tonight to understand that there comes a time and space in your life where you're going to have to depart from some of those that you thought were created for the entirety of your life. And I'm not just talking about people. I'm talking about mindsets. I'm talking about vision. I'm talking about purpose. Let me back that up. I'm not talking about vision and purpose. I'm talking about assignments. And I'm talking about responsibilities that you picked up that were never yours. They were never yours. That's why you're burnt out. That's why you feel as if you're exasperated. You don't know what you're going to do from here. You're just tired. You're ready to give up every day. You wake up with a certain uh, 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 aura about you or a certain atmosphere around you where you're hype. But by two hours into it, you find yourself right back in that state again that you were in at the end of yesterday, at the end of yesterday. So what has to happen, Cliff, if I'm there? What has to happen? See, sometimes you got to get alone. You got to get alone. And I could talk about Jacob and when he began to wrestle and it said that Jacob was left alone. Some of us fear that alone time. We fear being alone. One of the things about me is I am a introvert. I, by nature, I'm an introvert. I'm very, 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 very quiet. Okay, I'm very quiet. Now, some of you that may hear this, you may totally disagree with it. But the reason why you disagree with it is because of the type of relationship that we have. Once I get to know you or uh, if I feel comfortable around you, excuse me, and there is no check in my spirit concerning you, then, yeah, I let up a little bit and I'm a little cray cray. I can be a little cray cray. But by nature, I am very quiet. I'm very observant. I'm very, very observant, okay? So because of that nature that I have, uh, it has caused me sometimes to link up with individuals that are very uh, vocal, very demonstrative. And uh, when you link up with people like that, sometimes if their eyes aren't open, they can't see that which is inside of you. Okay. But the reality was, it wasn't about other people seeing what was in me. It was about me expressing what was in me. It was about me expressing what was in me. Some of you right now, you go home at night and you feel as if there's no hope, no way, no how. You feel as if there's nothing of any value in you because you're sitting back playing small and won't express the value that God has placed inside of you. You're waiting for somebody to validate you. You're waiting for somebody to tell you how great and how wonderful you are. How about you, Paul's? as my little cousin says she got from YouTube. How about you pause 
and begin to speak that validation to you, speak that affirmation to you. Now, I know we were taught that's pride. No, baby, let's talk some good talk. Why? Because the creator created you. The creator of all creators created you. And he placed himself inside of you. Now, I don't know how you identify with your higher power. If you call, uh, I call him he, she, they, however you identify, whatever it is, is inside of you. It is inside of you. That greatness, that light, that do the most power, that authority, that wisdom, that revelation, that understanding, that direction, that insight, it is inside of you. And the problem is that sometimes we talk contradictory to it. And the more we talk contradictory to those great things that have been invested inside of us, it's as if we are burying it, burying it, burying it, burying it, and piling dirt on top of dirt, on top of dirt, on top of dirt, to the point now that when it cries out, we think that the voice of God has gotten quieter for us. It's not that the voice of God has gotten quieter. What has happened is we piled everything on top of it, smothering that thing. And you say, but God is all powerful. He is all powerful. But the one thing that he has given us as human beings is free will. Free will. And he's not going to fight against our free will. So my question tonight to each and every one of you, as I'm bringing back this transformation center, will thou be made whole? Will you be transformed? Will you walk in the power, the authority, and reside in the dimension that the creator has called and designed for you to reside in? Or will you continue to play small to those who, can I be honest with you? There are some people that you look to for solutions. They can't give you the solution. I keep forgetting where the camera is. Let me look here at the camera. They can't give you the solution because you hold the solution for them. You've been looking to them and they're waiting for you to evolve and develop and grow and mature and embrace who you are so that you can be the solution or the answer that they have been searching for. Okay. So, Cliff, how do I begin to be that answer? I'm so glad that you asked. And this one, we weren't even supposed to be talking about the blueprint because we started the blueprint series, but we might as well just continue it today. How about that, all right? You have to, and the, the, the title of tonight is what? What now? Now, listen, I want first to plug my uh, podcast. I have a wonderful podcast. On that podcast, we discuss effective ways of facing life's most difficult we scratch that word difficult out, replace it with defining moments. Why? Because we have the right, the authority, and responsibility to define those moments and not allow those moments to define us. But the title of tonight's uh, teaching or conversation is What Now? What Now? And it might not make sense that it what it is right now, but by the end of it, it'll make a lot of sense to you. So I'm not even going to get into what it is, but I will get into this part of it. If you notice on the flyer, the word what is lowercase and the word now is all uppercase. Why? Because we're going to focus on the now. In two more weeks, if you look, the what is capitalized and the now is lowercase because we're going to focus on the what, all right? So now we're focusing on the now. So before I go any farther, I got excited. So because when I get excited, sometimes I forget some of the things that I'm posed to do. And I was posed to, and I know how to say suppose, all right? I was posed to do our breathing exercises. So right now, I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose. I want you to hold it. Breathe out through your mouth. Let's do that one more time. In through your nose. I went in through my mouth. It's okay sometimes to improvise. <laughs> in out. Now, I did that to bring us all into focus. I don't want you focusing on your past. I don't want you focusing on your future. I want you focused right now. The only thing that can produce what we need to be produced is now. That's the only thing we can focus on right now. 
We need to focus on right now to get the solutions, the strategies, the techniques, or whatever it is that you have been seeking the creator for. Cliff, look at the camera. Whatever you've been seeking the creator for, we need to be focused now in order to receive it. All right? So now, it's going to sound like I'm going to contradict myself, but I'm not. So as I was getting this together and God was getting me together, he began to deal with me about what he called, created, and designed me to do. And one of the things he told me was, Cliff, you can't focus on your now until you go back and pick up what you need to pick up. And I said, well, Lord, what is it that I need to go back and pick up? And he took me to a scripture that he gave me when he first told me that I was called to the ministry. When he first told me, he called me to be a prophet. This is the scripture that he gave me. Now, many had prophesied it. Many confirmed it afterwards. But he told me this himself. And that's what I was talking about earlier, about some of you, you're out there, you're burnt out, you're tired, you're frustrated, you're angry. You feel as if there's more to life than what you're experiencing right now because you're doing what somebody else told you you ought to be doing. And that may work for you for a season. But you know what will always happen? That greater will always cry out within you. And you will always find yourself conflicting with the greater in the mediocre that you have settled, settled, settled for, settled for, the mediocre that you have settled for. It is time out for us playing little, us playing small, and us settling for less than what the creator desires for us. And it's time for us to get everything that he has for us. But in order for us to get everything that he has for us, we have to do it the way that he originally intended for it to take place. All right, so let's go. He took me to Ezekiel 37. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. I'm gonna read some, I'm gonna paraphrase some. And if you're familiar with my ministry, you already know I am a word man. So I'm going to be breaking some words now, down, all right? I think this is from the contemporary Jewish Bible that I'm going to be reading. With the hand of Adonai upon me, Adonai carried me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. I'm going to stop right there. First, I want to talk about valley. And as I said in the beginning, we're going to be talking about our perception our perception of things, our perception of things, how we view things, how we process things, how we uh, come to conclusions about things, whether it's relating to us, whether it's relating to others, whether it's relating to uh, anything that affects uh, or um, effects, affects, or infects us. <laughs> you know, it, it, that's what I'm talking about on today. All right. As it relates to perception, many times we've already drawn a conclusion that is not true before anything has actually manifested. We 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 think back to how things may have happened before, excuse me, before. And we assume that we're facing the same situation over and over again. Now, I want to challenge you there, because what if it is the same situation, but you've changed? What if the situation that you're facing, yes, it is the reality. It may be identical to what you faced before. But what if now you have a different, uh, uh, you have a different skill set. You have different tools, techniques, and strategies to help you face those things that you once ran from, to face those things that once conquered and defeated you. And the reality is it may not have been the thing that defeated and conquered you. It may have been your thought process, your mindset, or yourself that defeated you, that defeated you. Because the Bible says very clearly, no weapon formed against us shall what? Prosper. It shall not prosper. So why did it prosper? Maybe it did not prosper, or maybe it prospered because you were empowering it. And I'm going to say that for myself. I don't want you to think, he coming hard at me. He don't know me. Listen, babe, I'm not talking to you nothing that I'm not talking to myself. Do you understand what I'm saying? This thing hit me first. 
You get what I'm saying? Because I know for myself that what I did when the weapon was formed, I took the weapon from the enemy. Then I began to sharpen the weapon with my thoughts, sharpen the weapon with my words that contradicted everything that God said, and sharpen the weapon with my patterns of behaviors that contradicted everything that the creator said and desired for my life. So perhaps it's not it that's defeating you, it's you that's defeating you. Mm. And the fact that you can defeat you shows you how powerful you are because the weapon can't even beat you, but you beat yourself. Therefore, if you could take that authority that you used to beat yourself, can you imagine what you could do? Man, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now, Valley, if we were here in person and I begin to ask some of you, what does the word Valley means to mean to you? Many of us would talk about the low point and we wouldn't think of it as the mountaintop. You know, if we're going through and God is developing us in the valley and it doesn't feel good in the valley and it sucks in the valley. But I want you to look at these definitions of the valley. This is why we have to have that paradigm shift because sometimes we, we already defeat ourselves by the thoughts that we are already thinking. We already defeat ourselves. Listen to what this word valley means, all right? It means a split, which I agree. Because sometimes in life, as I just was talking, we have to begin to make the decision we're going to do what God called us to do and not what everybody else feels or thinks we should do. So there's a split, there's a sever that takes place, and we both have to go our separate ways. That does not mean, it does not mean that that person or that experience was bad. Or that we're bad. It just means we've outgrown each other or we're growing in different directions. Some of us have to learn. And can I talk about me? I've learned how to start very strong. And that was one of my reservations about coming back here and doing this because I start very strong. But one of the things that I'm embracing and learning how to do is to finish and end things strong. Some of you, are at a season or at a stage in your life where you're having to learn how to finish something strong. Now, let's keep going. If you trace that word down to the primitive root, right, it, co it comes to a definition of to cleave, to cleave. Now, we know that word to cleave is used when it comes to marriage, you know, for a man leaving his parents and then cleaves to uh, his partner, okay? Um, now, that's so powerful to me because to be able to parallel the valley with a covenant type of experience means that maybe the valley is a place of covenant. Sometimes we identify the mountaintop as a place of covenant because we look at that, look at that as where we are most victorious. But could you be most victorious in your valley too if you had a shift, a paradigm shift? Listen to what else it means, to break open, to break open. Perhaps there's some things that are inside of you that need to come up out of you, that you need to be broken open so you can even see that which is in you and the world can begin to see that's what that which is in you. And here's my favorite one. Valley translates to a word that says when. It translates to a word that says when. So each and every one of these definitions contradict some of the, the, the perception that we've had concerning valley experiences. You know why? Because we look at valley experiences as punishment. We look at valley experience as, well, this is my lot on life. My mom struggled. My dad struggled. My sister struggled. We all struggle. So we all just going to struggle. Or, or, or you look at it as, well, I did this person wrong, so I'm reaping. So I can't get mad because I'm reaping. No, pull yourself up by the bootstraps and understand that even if you're in a valley, you can have the same victory that you have on the mountaintop. But it just means it's time for you to make some decisions. It's time to make some decisions. Some of you are sitting and you're waiting. You said, when 2021 come, that's going to be my year. But you forgot. You said 2020 was going to be your year. 1999 was going to be your year. You can go all the way back. All right, we can keep going back. And I know I did it. 
I did it. But it wasn't until I changed this mindset to understand that I did not need to wait for a ball to drop. I did not need to wait for something catastrophic to happen. I needed to be the catastrophic event that happened. So stop waiting. We still have time. <coughs> Excuse me. We still have time. First of all, what's the day? The second? We got 21 days to Cliffmas. That's my birthday, y'all. But we got time. We have plenty of time for God to do everything that he promised us he was going to do in 2021. But the question is, are you willing to allow him to do it? Or have you already parked yourself in 2021, 2021 with a 2020 mindset? Let's keep going now. The next word is bones. Ken, the, the, the valley was full of bones. It was full of bones. Now, let's talk about perception. Many of us, if we see bones, we're going to think of death. And we're going to think about an extended time of death. Why? Because that means the body has decayed, and the only thing that is left are the bones, all right? Now, let's look at the definition of bones. I'm telling you, uh, paradigm shift, paradigm shift, here we go. Bones, life, substance, <laughs> strength. And then it even talks about uh, uh, being very strong, very strong, very strong. I mean, you got any Jeremiah fans, you know, it's a Jeremiah said, like fire shot up in my bones now. In order for the, the, the fire to get past his flesh, his sinew, his tendons, and get down into them bones, man, that was so powerful. That was so powerful. And we can even parallel with this story because God's about to tell the, pro, uh, uh, the prophet to speak to the bones. He's speaking to the foundation of things. That's why we have to go back to that which he had called and created us to do because the foundation has to be strong enough. The foundation has to be strong enough that if everything else it is penetrated. That foundation still can hold on to the essence or the core of who you were created to be. All right, let's keep going. To bind fast, to close the eyes, to make powerful or numerous, to make powerful or numerous. Are you listening? Listen. To make powerful or numerous. This is this is what bones mean. This is what bones mean. All right. Excuse me. To be great and to be increased. To wax mightier. To wax mightier. So God has you in the valley, and He's got you stripped down to nothing. It seems like you have no resources, no help, no way, and no how. But it's at that time that he desires to cause you to wax mightier than you ever waxed before. But the question is, what are you going to do with this situation? How are you going to handle the valley? How are you going to handle the bones? Are you going to look at the bones as failure? Mm. Because some of you are looking at your vision and it feel everybody left Excuse me. Everybody left. Everything that was spoken seems to be contradicted now. I don't have anything left but these bones. I don't have anything left but these bones. And I'm in a valley. Let's keep going. All right. Verse two. He had me pass all around them. There were so many bones lying in the valley. And they were dry. Man, oh man, oh man. They were dry. They were dry. They were dry. Some of you feel as if your life is dry. Your ministry is dry. Your words are dry. Your work is dry. Your business is dry. Your finances are dry. This is how you feel. As it relates to everything. And I asked a couple questions here. I want to ask this question. What is your sight and perception of a valley? All right. Then the second one is, what is your vision in the valley? And I don't know if we're going to get to vision and sight on tonight. I really don't want to go there unless he say I got to go there. 
But you have to graduate beyond just seeing with these eyes, baby. Because one thing I've learned throughout my life is that my eyes will deceive me. <laughs> I've had multiple, I've had three cornea transplants because I had two rejections. I had one rejection where they had to go in and put another cornea in, and then I had a rejection that healed itself. Okay. So I understand how powerful and important your eyes are. But when it relates to what the creator has called and designed you to do, you need vision, not sight. You need vision, not sight. And that vision can tap into that imagination. And this is why I always tell adults that you never need to lose that imagination. And you don't need to be around people that will cause you to lose that imagination. Now, I'm not talking about being delusional, but I'm talking about your ability to dream beyond your present state. If you keep submitting to the sight or submitting to that which you see, you will never experience all that the creator has called design and purpose you to do because everything that he called design and purpose you to do is beyond your present limited circumstances. He just wants to see, can you elevate beyond your present? Can you elevate beyond your present? And the only way that we can properly elevate is if we connect to the original blueprint or connect to the original vision that he gave to us. I don't care who told you you ought to be doing this. If God did not tell you to do it, I encourage you to stop. And they can get mad if they want to, but stop doing that. Why? Because that's draining you. And it's not giving any value to you. But Cliff, you don't understand. I made this commitment and I did this and I did that. And Cliff, I, I've been doing this so long. I don't know what they'll do without me. And I get it. I do. I get it. I understand. But at the end of the day, would you rather them be upset with you? Or, or, or miss out on everything that God has for you? I'll have you upset with me before I miss out. Now, it wasn't always like that. But now I understand what's more valuable, what's more valuable, what's more valuable. Anyway, so we keep going and, and God begins to ask Ezekiel, can these bones live? Now, notice he did not say, can these men live? Can these women live? Can these children live? Can these lifeless creatures live? He said, can these bones bones live. Here's what I want to encourage you, you visionary, you visionist, you awesome man, woman of God. Here's what I want to encourage you to understand. God is not concerned about what it looks like. God is concerned about what you see versus what it is that it looks like to everybody else. What you see, what you see, what you call it, what you identify it as. That's what he's concerned about. Can these bones live? Can they have life? Can they be vibrant? Can they be effective? Can your vision live? Can your purpose and design live? Can you write that book? Can you write that song? Can you write that stage, stage play? Can you write that sitcom? Can you write that movie? Can you do what the creator has called and designed you to do? Even though right now it looks like nobody's calling you, nobody's checking for you, nobody's uh, booking you, nobody wants you to be a part of anything. That's what it seems like right now. But could it be that the creator is trying to get you to focus on that what he has called you to do? Can these bones live? What time is it? All right. Can these bones Live? Can they live? Can they recover? Oh, 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 Can they quicken? Oh, but this is my one. Can they be whole? Can they be whole? Can they be whole? Can they be whole? Now, if you remember the beginning, I asked the question, will thou be made whole? Now the creator is asking, can these bones be whole? Now, I know, I know, I know what it looks like. I know what it sounds like. I know what the doctor said. I know what the lawyer saying. I know what they're saying on your job. I know what that bank account is saying. But can, 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 can they be whole? 
Let's keep going here. I'm almost done. Y'all, we're going to have some fun at the Transformation Center. We're going to have some fun at the Transformation Center. Do y'all hear me? We're going to have some fun. You know why? Because one of the things that I've come to a reality is that, yes, these bones can live. Yes, these bones can live. Yes, I can live. And as long as I live and my mindset is focused concerning this vision, then this vision lives. Okay, then he said to me, prophesy over these bones. Say to them dry bones, hear what Adonai has to say. Now, very quickly, what I love about that in this translation, uh, I think the King James says prophesy upon, some say to. What I love about over and upon, it is a uh, another uh you are speaking to them from another dimension. You are speaking over them. You're not speaking directly to them. Sometimes there's some things that we're speaking directly to that we have authority over. We have authority over those things. So we have to stop speaking to them as if we're on equal level with them and speak over them things. Speak over it. 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 Speak, over it. speak life over those things. All right, let's keep going. To these bones, Adonai Elohim say, I will make breath enter you and you will live. Now, isn't this crazy? I'm going to make breath enter you. Now, this is still bones now. Bones are still bones. He speaks to the conclusion at the beginning before he speaks to anything else. He didn't speak step by step the way that we would speak it because we will start calling things to come upon the bones. But before the things even came upon the bones, he spoke to the, to the conclusion of it. He said, I will make breath enter you and you will live. I will make breath enter you and you will live. Some of you, you're trying to speak to it in the state that it's in right now and you're trying to speak to it step by step. No, baby, go to the conclusion of the matter. Begin to prophesy the conclusion of the matter to it and then watch that thing begin to manifest. 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 I might be great to launch my singing career. Y'all don't try to book me. Don't try to book me to come sing. He said, I will attach ligaments to you, all right, and make, make flesh grow on you, cover you with skin, and put breath or life in you. You will live and you will know that I am Adonai. You will live and you will know that I am Adonai. So perhaps some of us are going through some of the things that we're going through. Because we need to know and be a little more assured that he is God alone. Let's keep going. Here we go. I don't know if I want to go into the definitions of the skin and the signu. Um, but signu, I, I hit this. Signu, one of the things it stood for was uh, uh, vigorous strength. So I'm going to give you strength. The flesh should stood for substance in reality. I'm going to bring substance to this thing and I'm going to bring it into a reality because there's some things that some of you have spoken for years and they have not come into reality. Well, the creator wants you to know that he's about to bring those things into a reality. And then he says skin. It talks about the, the softer outer covering of the vertebrae, the backbones uh, that, that protects your ability to stand. I'm going to protect your ability to take the stand that you need to take in order to fulfill the purpose and design that I have for your life. Yo, this is good to me. This is good to me. This is good to me. All right, so I prophesied as ordered. And while I was prophesying, there was a noise and a rattling sound. And it was the bones coming together, each bone in its proper place. Each bone in its proper place. But listen, I don't want you to get distracted by the noise. And I want you to understand the purpose of the noise because there's a lot of noise going on around you. There's a lot of uh, uh, clatter going on around you and you are getting distracted by the noise because you're listening to some of the noise that's being said. It's not for you to listen to the noise. It's for you to see what is manifesting because of the noise. It was the noise that brought the bones together, but you can't stop at the noise, baby, because it does not complete that which God said was going to take place. All right. so. You have to prophesy beyond the noise, prophesy beyond the noise, prophesy beyond the noise, prophesy beyond the noise. As I watched ligaments grew on them, 
Flesh appeared and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. There was no breath in them. There is a process. There are stages that have to take place. And you know what's going on with some of us? I always talk about momentum and how sometimes we lose momentum because we quit. We don't take breaks. We quit. And anytime you quit, you lose the momentum that was gained. And there are various uh, uh, degrees of momentum that are needed for different things in our lives, different stages of our lives, different manifestations in our lives, different blessings in our lives, you know, and different gifts, talents, and abilities in our lives, different, can I say this as well? Different degrees of healing that is needed in our lives. We need that momentum so we cannot stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop, all right? Now let's keep going. As I watched the ligaments grew, we just read that, okay? Next he said to me, so now we have what? We have the ligaments, we have the flesh, we have the skin, but we have no breath. Some of you have even seen your vision get to that state. You've seen yourself get to that state, but you felt as if there was no life left in it. There was still no life left in it after you watch God do the manifestation that he did to this degree. Do you think God's going to do all of that and then leave it breathless? Come on now, let's keep going. Next he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, human being, say to the breath that Adonai Elohim, say, come from the four winds, breathe, come from the four winds, breath, and breathe on these slain so they can come to life or so they can live, all right? Now, back in the day, this is something I, I've taught this many times, and never the same, never the same, but it was a time that God began to deal with me about the four winds representing uh, who you are, the core of who you are, the spiritual nature of who you are, the emotional nature of who you are, the physical nature of who you are, and the economical nature of who you are. He's speaking to those four winds. He's speaking life to those four winds. And he says, so I prophesied as I was ordered. And the breath came into them, and they were alive. They stood up on their feet, a huge army. Stop stopping. Go through the process. Let the creator process you. Let him prove you. Let him prove your work and your vision. Let him prove your life. You don't have to fight any battle. All you need to do is show up and be you. Stop trying to be something you're not. Stop trying to be more than what you are. Stop trying to be what you think they want you to be. Truth is, some of them don't even know who they are. And understand, baby, that army is about to arise. That vision is coming to life. Your spirit man is coming to life. That healing is coming to life in you. The wholeness of who you are is coming to life in you, but it's all coming with a decision that you have to make. And the question is, are you willing to make that decision? Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word on tonight. We thank you for this conversation. We thank you for the manifestation that's following this conversation. Lord, I thank you for everything that you're doing for each and every one of them. I thank you for the testimonies that we will hear, God, because you are concerned about us, your people. I thank you for strengthening them, strengthening them, strengthening <laughs> them. I thank you for awakening dreams and visions inside of them, God. Not just while they sleep, God, but even while they're awake, God. I thank you for awakening a hunger and a desire for your will and your purpose for their life. I even thank you, God, for severing what needs to be severed and creating what needs to be created. And we'll give you honor. We'll give you praise. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, we pray. And we all say, I mean, I mean. Listen, I want to thank you all for joining me on tonight. Prayerfully, something was said that will help transform your life. I don't just want something said that tickles you or something that's said that, that inspires you. No, baby, we need life more than 
uh, we need to be more than inspired. And to be honest with you, your inspiration should come with it from within anyway. But I want to empower, I want to educate, empower, activate, and release you into purpose, into dimensional purpose. And that's the whole point of these purpose empowerment sessions. As I said in the beginning, I encourage you to join the coaching group for your questions, even for ex exclusive content. Guys, listen, I'm giving you guys exclusive content that I only give, I would only give to my coaching clients. So I want you to consider that. Where's it at? I want you to consider purchasing your copy of from stagnation to transformation. All right. You can do all that at my website, www.cliftonpettyjohn.com. Also, if you desire to give on tonight, you want to sow a seed into the word, uh, you're welcome to do so. I will put the uh, cash app in the description. Um, y'all, I just want y'all to be encouraged to understand that there is life there is life. There is life. I don't care what anybody says, what anybody thinks, and even what you think about yourself at what you have defined as your lowest moments. After today, understand that the valley is not your lowest moments. It is a splitting. It is a time of covenant. It is a time of cleave, leaving and cleaving. That's what it is for you. So make up your mind today to do whatever it takes for you to experience everything that God has for you. Listen, I love each and every one of you. And as I always say, create a greater day. No, create a great day. <laughs> Walk with purpose and by all means, execute your vision. I'll see you in two weeks. Peace.